Hello everyone, I am Praveen Gupta, a research fellow at Microsoft Research India. Today, I will be presenting our work on Data Lake Navigator, an automated system for data discovery at scale. This is joint work with my collaborators at Microsoft Research, Sagar Bharadwaj, Ranjita Bhagwan and Saikat Guha. Let me motivate the problem we are trying to solve with an example. An analyst Anita wants to build a root cause analysis dashboard. She starts with a table called alerts which gives her a list of errors which has occurred in the data center. For analyzing these errors, she needs information from different sources, such as the system and application layers. However, the tables containing this data can have names such as EDS, store stream, HA log, etc., which is not very easy to understand. She needs to join all these tables on columns that represent machine names. But these column names are not the same across different data sets. These are called machine name in one table, while being called server or host in the others. Moreover, in a large organization, these data sets are often owned by several independent teams, each having its own data access and usage practices. All this makes it really difficult for Anita to easily find data that she needs for her analysis. This process of manually looking for teams and data sets can take several months. Thus, we built Data Lake Navigator, a large scale data discovery system for data lakes that store exabytes of data in billions of data streams. Among the previous work targeting this problem, Josie and Aurum are two state-of-the-art techniques. However, they require a full pass over the data, which is not feasible for large data lakes, containing exabytes of data. Josie requires an intermediate data structure whose size explodes with an increase in number of unique values in the data sets. Meanwhile, Aurum provides several similarity metrics but it leaves the task of combining and using these metrics to the end users. Here, we leverage our unique advantage at an organization like Microsoft by automatically learning these characteristics from the datasets we have seen to be related in the past. We see millions of jobs run every day on Cosmos, which is an internal data lake at Microsoft. We have logged queries from these jobs run over the last decade. This enables us to parse join clauses from these scripts and use them as the collective knowledge of several developers and analysts who have worked with the datasets to understand the characteristics of related data. Consider this script written in scope, which is the querying language in Cosmos. We see that the column server in store op stream is joined with another column machine name in machine stream. We parse all such scripts to retrieve a list of column pairs that have been joined in the past. We build Data Lake Navigator in a two-step process. First, we learn a relevance classifier using the column pairs which have been joined by developers in the past. Then, we build a data relationship graph, where nodes represent the columns in the dataset and an edge represents a relationship between these two columns. Each edge also has a relevance metric, which signifies the probability of a relationship existing between these two columns. For building a relevance classifier, we start by generating our ground truth where positive samples are the column pairs joined in the past and negative samples are random column pairs from the dataset. Although this can add noise to the dataset as randomly selected column pairs may be related, it is statistically unlikely if we take a large number of columns. Then we extract few features based on metadata and data collected from these columns in the ground truth and train a random forest classifier with 100 trees. This classifier takes column pairs not seen before in the ground truth and gives a probability of them being related. We use two classes of features, metadata and content based features. Metadata based features are based on column names. First, we start by tokenizing these column names. A column called machine name is broken down into machine and name and the column server has a single token server. We use column name uniqueness to represent the rarity of tokens occurring in the column name. We capture TF-IDF scores for each of the token in the dataset. Tokens like ID, name occur frequently in this dataset and thus have a lower TF-IDF value. Column name uniqueness is the TF-IDF score of the rarest token in the column name. Column name similarity captures the semantic similarity between two columns. We use token embeddings pre-trained on software specific datasets and generate the column name embeddings by aggregating token embeddings with their weighted TF-IDF scores. Column name similarity is the cosine similarity between two column name embeddings. Machine name and server will have a high cosine similarity 
as the token's machine and server are closed in the n-dimensional MEDX and the token name has a low TF-IDF score. Content features are calculated by using data stored in each column. Since reading the entire dataset is not feasible at this scale, we read samples from each of the column and calculate these features based on estimates of the number of distinct values in a column and the number of overlaps between two columns. We use Jacquard similarity and inclusion dependence as measures of overlap and subsumption between two columns. Pattern similarity is helpful in column pairs containing unique identifiers. We mask the hexadecimal characters from the columns and then estimate the Jacquard score. This is because overlap between samples collected from columns containing unique identifiers is expected to be low. Since the intersection between two numeric column pairs like error count and memory counter do not signify relevance, we use these content-based features only for textual columns. We train three classifiers to see the advantages of these features. A metadata-only model gives an F1 score of 0.94. A model based on only content features has an F1 score of 0.87 and an ensemble of metadata model for numerical column pairs and all features model for textual column pairs has an F1 score of 0.96 on the ground truth. A pair user ID and customer ID has lower content based features like Jacquard due to fewer intersection in the samples but it has a high column name similarity because of the tokens user and customer. A column pair MNGR and manager name has a low column name similarity as MNGR does not exist in the vocabulary of our pre-trained embeddings. But it has a high jacquard because of many common values existing between these two columns. We see that the metadata features work well, with data features improving the F1 score marginally. But a metadata only model is easier to scale as it does not require reading any of the data streams. Once we have built a relevance classifier, we are ready to build a data relationship graph. Consider an example dataset containing around 30,000 columns. Taking all possible pairs within this dataset can lead to 450 million column pairs. We apply two pruning techniques to reduce this. In metadata clustering, we apply k-means clustering to the column name embeddings we generate and add all pairs within each of the cluster to our list of candidate pairs. In reverse index based pruning, we create an inverted index to map the data values to the columns they occur in. Any column pair which shares even a single value is added to the list of candidate pairs. This reduces our candidate pairs from 450 million to just 40 million pairs. Then we pass these pairs to our classifier which predicts whether each of the pair is related or not. We built a data graph for a data lake containing around 4.5 petabytes of data in 81 minutes. This was 30 times faster than other state-of-the-art techniques, thus telling us that our approach scales well. We also created a dataset by manually labeling all related pairs in the dataset. In this dataset, our approach significantly outperformed other state-of-the-art methods and gave us an F1 score of 0.79 compared to 0.54 with Aurum and 0.4 with Josie. Thus, our system can accurately learn characteristics from past user queries and build a data graph. To summarize, we built Data Lake Navigator, an automated system for data discovery in large data lakes. We use machine learning to learn the characteristics of columns joined in user jobs from the past decade. We built a data graph for a data lake containing 4.5 petabytes of data in 81 minutes. Thus our approach scales well. We significantly outperformed other state-of-the-art systems on a manually labeled dataset by leveraging our past user queries. Thank you.